Well, first, I'd like to acknowledge that we're standing on Aboriginal land, land that was stolen and never ceded of the Wurundjeri of the Kulin Nation. Most people who know about the Tamil Tigers would associate them with the military struggle. They wouldn't associate them with the running of a state with self-government by the Tamil people. And reading this book, the structures of Tamil Elam and the gamut of activities that the Tamil state was responsible for, it made me think a bit about the Kurdish state that is being constructed in Rojava in northern Syria, where the Kurds are doing something similar now to what the Tamils did for several decades in the northeast of Sri Lanka. And I think this book reminds us that the struggle for freedom isn't just a military struggle, the struggle for liberation, it's the development of a new society. And I think it's quite amazing, and one of the speakers earlier also talked about this, that they were, the Tamils in Sri Lanka were creating an alternative society while also having to fight a war, fight to defend the new society that they were creating. And that is quite like a massive, massive task and something which is really hard to imagine for someone like myself who hasn't experienced war. I think there were many achievements which were made in the society that the Tamils created. The book points to a universal health system, not just the health services for the comrades fighting on the front line, but also for the people, for everybody. And as we know in Australia, universal health care is under threat and in the United States they've never ever won universal health care. The book points to some of the different reforms for women, women's rights in the law, and some of these are rights that women won in the Tamil areas before they were won in some other parts of the world, and also attempts to address caste prejudice as well. I think all these are really important developments, but also the book casts a look at the breadth of the activities from the development of science and, and so forth in agriculture, the development of the economy and agricultural industries and the centralised planning system. And I had a friend, a Tamil friend from Melbourne, who went back to visit the northeastern area when the Tamils still controlled the peninsula of Jaffna. And he was wishing he'd taken his kids back with him because he was very impressed by the society and the reforms which the Tamil government had created. And again, I don't necessarily think of it as being a de facto government. I, I think of it as being the government of the Tamil areas at that time. As someone I, I know from the Tamil community in Sydney, uh, Anna Perara Jasingham talked about books in his quote, in his comments about the book, about this being the most, he sees it as the most important development of the Tamil Tigers, the development of this new state. And I think I agree with him. Now, obviously, they had to fight <laughs> a war of liberation. I think the development of the Tamil state was very, very important. And in 2004, we saw that when the Sri Lankan government was trying to block relief efforts for victims of the tsunami, it was really the Tamil state that provided the aid to Tamils and non-Tamils living in, in the northeastern areas. I would really like to congratulate the Tamil youth for organising the book launch the Tamil youth are involved in creating the book, in bringing together the records, because I also think that a lot of uh, activists, people on the ground in the Tamil areas of Sri Lanka at that time, you were so fully involved in the struggle and then also the struggles after 2009, where the struggle has entered a new phase, and there's a rebuilding of the struggle, that sometimes you're so engrossed in the struggle you don't write things down. <laughs> a lot of knowledge gets lost from the struggle because everyone, you know, the activists the, um, are so engrossed that we don't, we're not all academics and so forth, we don't write things down. And some of that information does get lost to future generations. So I think hopefully this is just the first book of many about that whole experience of creating the Tamil state in the North because it is truly amazing 
to create a state which didn't just run a few things, but the breadth of activities that the Tamil Tigers ran in, in the north. And, you know, certainly I know one of the Tamil refugees in Australia, Ranjini, who ASIO tried to deny her claim that she was a security risk for a long time. And people suspected, because ASIO never reveals the basis on which they claim you're a security threat, but people surmised that the reason that they had targeted her was because she worked in, in the government, in the court system. And so that's sort of like, you know, saying that someone should have retribution against them because they walk, work for the court system in Australia right now when we've got the Morrison government that's doing the most terrible things to people. It's, um, it's an indication of the fact that this was the government of the time, the government of the day in, in Sri Lanka. Um, I would like to, I think it is fitting that this book launch is also commemorating the victims, of the Senchalai massacre. I would like to pay my tribute to the victims of that massacre and it is very sobering to see the faces of the young victims of that massacre. But the fact that these young people were at this, this school, this education centre for young people is also a reflection of the development of, of the Tamil state and what the Tamils achieved in that area. Um, from Social Alliance, we've had an interest and support for the Tamil struggle for a very, very long time and also predating the Socialist Alliance, former socialist organisation that was part of forming the Socialist Alliance. We've had a long period of solidarity and coverage of Tamil struggles in our, in our newspaper because there is a new phase of the struggle and we need to report on the development of the new phase of the struggle. There's still a need for ongoing solidarity, a need for calling for release of prisoners and all sorts of other rights for Tamil people in, in Sri Lanka. This book, I think, is important, actually not just for the Tamil community, but for other oppressed nations, liberation struggles, where people are thinking about how they go about the task of liberation and even in terms of thinking about a future social society, um, it's not just the mass struggle, etc., to try and get there, it's the question of what sort of society you build coming out of that struggle. And I think that's what the book starts to pose those sort of questions by looking at one case study, the case study of what the Tamils have achieved. And I think Tamils achieved a massive, a massive thing in, with the Tamil state in the northeast and I look forward to seeing a free Tamil Elam do that again.